Hello everybody. I wanted to give you an update to my 6700 XT compatibility in Unreal Engine 5 thing that I've been working on. Um, and it's a doozy. I have a whole lot of things uh, already opened up and set up for you to see. So let's start off with the first thing here. Uh, just the hardware. Like I said, 6700 XT, except I am running Windows 11 right now, the latest dev build of it, which means I am limited to only these drivers right here, 30.0.13,000, basically. These are beta WDDM 3.0 drivers. Uh, and you can see that here. And these are the only drivers that work. So take everything that I'm saying kind of with a grain of salt that it only applies to Windows 11. Um, I kind of want to test the normal build of Windows 10, but I also don't feel like going through any more pain than I have to. So with the hardware out of the way, I don't know if you remember, but in the last, um, the last time that I was talking about this and showing this, there basically was an issue where Unreal Engine 5 would just crash to the desktop uh, whenever I loaded up my project. And... After that, there was another problem where on um, UE5 main, which is over here. I'm pretty sure I could show this on stream. It's fine. You just got to sign up for access to it. So you got different code bases for on Epic Games for you to build on Real Engine. And you have Unreal Engine 5 Early Access, which is their stable branch, which is what you can download in the Epic Games Launcher. And then you have UE5 Main, which is their development branch that is unstable and not recommended to use at all, basically. It's like, this is where they're doing all their work. And for the longest time, I couldn't build anything on here, uh, which is understandable. But there was a point where I could build things. So I was stuck on one build for a long time um, due to an issue with something with the widget class or something. And so I, I got impatient. So I posted to their forums. Uh, you know, it was like the last uh, commit that I was able to compile was on 625. And I was starting to think it was me at this point that only had this issue. And this person just registered to the forums just to say, I got the same problem. And then in, in their next post here, they posted a solution, which was adding a couple pragmas to the code. Um, and to the part of the code, which is right here, you look for this part of the code and then you add the pragmas on top of it, I think. I mean, this may let me build it. I don't know if this is correct styling, but I don't care this is just for me. Um, and then put this thing at the bottom, just surround this part of the code with these pragmas for the warnings that were popping up. This let me build it. So I'm gonna be able to continue testing and I'm gonna close this now because this is using resources. So that let me build the latest code for Unreal Engine 5 main, which is great. But then I ran into another problem and I could kick myself because maybe I didn't need to do any of this for so long. I was going through all of the settings in my default engine INI &I file that I usually use um, with a whole bunch of variables that, you know, uh, when you're using the engine, you can go to console variables and then it pulls up, you know, this, you could look up a whole bunch of settings, you know, so I'd go like, okay, what's, what's new for Lumen uh, settings, advanced Lumen settings. So I'd pull up the Lumen settings. 
I would change things around, you know, mess with stuff. Turns out, Lumen Screen Probe Gather, Radiance Cache, Grid Resolution, and or Radiance Cache Probe Resolution that I changed. The default for Probe Resolution is 32, and the default for Grid Resolution is 16. It's probably Probe Resolution that's breaking it, but these were causing DXGI device driver timeouts that I could not fix. No amount of disabling driver timeouts in Windows or anything would make these not happen. And I didn't know it was these settings. I was dancing around everything besides getting rid of these settings. So I got rid of these. And hopefully it doesn't make a liar of me because that happens a lot with things. But now it fully works. Uh, there are some graphical glitches, which I will, I'll, I'll, I'll show, but let me, um, like, I'm not using Lumen in this scene, uh, on any of the geometry yet, because there's like an issue where in the, the UE5 main builds, anything that's using Nanite, is that what I said before? Yeah. Anything that's using Nanite vibrates and that just kind of makes me dizzy when I'm working on stuff. So I am just not using it because I, I mean, I don't really need it yet. Um, but I am going to be using it when that's stable. So I have ray trace shadows enabled, hardware ray tracing enabled, virtual shadow maps, and I have hardware ray tra tracing being used for the lumen. So I have hardware lumen on. So all of the settings that not you're seeing in this one, but you're seeing in this one, because I have lumen hardware ray tracing, I have these special settings that make reflections and I got a whole bunch of stuff that makes things look good, but I'm going to have to go through one by one in all of these and make sure they're even necessary anymore. Because stuff is changing so much in this engine that the faults are changing. Everything is changing. So, yeah, it works now. I could turn the camera and the device doesn't hang anymore, which is great. You can see I've been going around in this map and I've been adding... Uh, lights to the emissive parts of the materials and we go in the visualize mode so you can see the lumen scene works all of all this stuff works here we go into another map real quick that will probably show a little bit more interesting things though uh which map is it honestly forget what's map 16 If this causes shaders to compile, I might have to pause recording. Okay, I'm back. Sorry, it's been multiple hours. I should have started this probably last night when I slept. Um, you know, generating all of the data cache and building everything for every map that I wanted to show. But it's all done. So I think what I was going to do was show issues that are still exist while also showing that yes this works and it doesn't crash with hardware ray tracing enabled so let's go in the lit mode and this map i do have um nanite enabled and you can see oh there we go i thought it was going to crash there okay cool now yeah, a little hitch but it's all good and okay no there aren't that many issues I'm, I am completely mistaken because I actually haven't looked at this map yet with the 6700 XT and this looks, this looks great. I'm not going to go and disable Nanite to stop the, the vibrating going on, on some of the objects as you could, I don't know if it shows up in the video, it kind of does, but this is this looks great no that this is it's really close to uh for me being able to say that i can recommend that you grab a amd 6000 series card now um yeah i i'm very impressed by this i'm curious though what it what is I guess we're using VRAM. Uh, sorry, my options are limited for knowing what the heck uh, 
is going on with this thing. Not really sure how I can show both of those at the same time, but yeah. A VRAM's an important thing with this, and that's why I like this card. It's cheap. If it's at MSRP, don't be buying it for like... Like, if you see a 6700 XT and it's 600 bucks, skip it. Don't buy anything. For, what is it, 450 to $500? It's a great deal for how much VRAM it has. For what it lets you do with ray tracing, it's, it's great. Because VRAM is important when you're when you're doing this kind of this kind of work in Unreal Engine Five. Uh, while you're working in the engine, it's important. I need to stress this because once you compile this out and you run it as an EXE, it doesn't use as much resources. And especially if you optimize it, it's not going to use as much resources. Yeah, those reflections are working good. Yeah, everything looks good in this map. Um, yeah, let's snoop around since not everything has to load like crazy. And OBS shouldn't get overloaded too much. There shouldn't be that much CPU usage going on. Ah, I closed that by mistake. I like having that open all the time. So here's map 01. I'm not all of these maps. Uh, I'm I'm not done with them yet. Uh, I haven't I haven't you know done everything that I, I need to do with them. But for the most part, they're set up. Like are these lights on? Okay, these lights are on. That lights on. Okay, yeah, you could see a little graphical glitch that ends up happening here. There's flickering that goes on. And I believe that is. Lighting mode. Right now we're in two, so let's try one. No change. Try zero. No change. Okay. I thought it was that. Maybe it's not. But for the most part, um, like other times I've shown this, this is there are no real lights. Um, in fact, let's let's go to no lights mode. As I always think that's the most impressive thing to show off with with um, with ray tracing is the fact that you don't need real lights. Well, if you have a simple simple map map map, map geometry like uh, I have, then you don't need lights. Um, yeah, I mean, like that's just an emissive texture I have set up. I might as well show that off while I'm here, you know, right? Yeah, so uh, I have a whole bunch of base materials that I made. No, wait for that. Go away. Thank you. And um, eh, this might look complicated, but it's really not. Trust me, this isn't. It's just a whole lot of things I could probably simplify that are made for switches and variables. Uh, so this can be a universal master material. Like um, these up here are for the detail texture. I have a switch that you could enable that will add a detail texture, which basically just adds a little bump map that you could scale independently of the original base textures resolution. So you could get some cool effects out of that. Um, yeah, and then I have the parameters for like the base color, a metal, specular, roughness, normal. And then I have, I think that's the scale for the detail texture. Then I have diffuse intensity, normal intensity for the detail texture. Then I have the emissive. And this is for emissives that use HDR textures. Um, double click on it because I want to open the texture. Yeah, and this is a HDR texture that, that I made uh, in Photoshop where I believe I made the white the brightest that you could make white in 32-bit color. And black, I think I made the darkest you could make black. I think that's how I did this. Which is probably extremely stupid, but whatever, I wanted to do it, you know, shoot me. Um, I think we got brightness, we got emissive brightness, and then I have a whole bunch of fixed values for like 
Um, there's, you know, switches. Are you using a custom roughness? Yes. Are you using a custom specular? No, you know, yes. But if you pick no, it'll just automatically put the, the uh, default values for what those things would be. Uh, you have a new one that I put in that's a flat normal. Um, so if you're not using a custom normal map, then it'll default to just making sure to have a flat normal uh, in there, which is, is it from the normal flat and flat normal? Yeah. Yeah. And that works pretty good. I think I did that right. Yeah, remember to do this for, for your games, by the way. And if you use Unreal Engine 4 or 5, as you're making materials, note what things are the same between all of the materials and make master materials so you don't have a whole bunch of shaders that need to compile. And also, if you do this, add switches. Also, also if you do this and you have you know, ranges that you could select for things like, well, I mean, this isn't a good example. Like, um, where's a good example? Actually, I might not have it on this one, but if you, if you have like a manual roughness value, fix the scalar between zero and one, just simple things like that little optimization things that might actually impact uh, your development experience. But yeah, let's keep looking around here. I've been doing my usual thing where I use the model tool here to select triangles out of uh, bits. Like, what's a good spot here? I already did that whole room over here. Let's go to unlit mode because I didn't do this room. Yeah, you know, like if you have this, this is all, you know, this is all one mesh over here. And it's also bits and pieces of that mesh is over there. And if I click cancel, go here, let's put a light right here just for a second. So. If I go into visualize lumen scene, because that this this object's mesh, uh, I'm just going to use the phrase is discontinuous or something. I don't know really what to call that, but since it's all over the place, it's not represented in the lumen scene, and that's no good. So basically, what you need to do. And this is a refresher, I guess. I, I like talking about this because I don't want to see people putting out things from Unreal Engine 5 that are like, look, this is awesome. And this is the, the best the engine could look. And But you didn't do any research and you didn't set up your scene properly. And it's actually not working the way you think it's working. You got to diagnose these things. So you want this to be represented in Lumen Scene correctly. Let's take that. And you probably don't even know, need to go this fine grain, but take that, separate it out. Take this, boop, boop, and separate it out. And I will do all of these. And then the last one I'll do for now is this. I didn't set any custom settings for each of those meshes that I just made. I just made a mesh of things. And go into lit mode. Let's move that look over here. And if you go into the lumen scene, you can see now it is represented in the lumen scene. But there is also another thing going on here. If you go into the mesh distance fields, because this is this also is used in calculation of lumen in hardware and in software mode and i don't know if you noticed but in the lumen scene shadow looks weird here that doesn't really look right 
Like, what, what is this black part up here? What, why is that like that? And that's because the mesh distance field has some overlapping blobby business from something. Most likely, it's from the rest of the, the mesh that I didn't do. So if I did the rest of that mesh, it wouldn't have that dark shadowed part. Let's just see what happens if I do this. Might drop frames for a little bit. Okay, CPU is not being used that much. That wasn't too bad. Okay, I mean, it kind of fixed it, but it's still not as good as it could be. But yeah, like I said, you have to break these things out. And I'm so happy that I can finally say that, yeah, I mean, that this version of Unreal 5, uh, UE5 main from, you know, their GitHub is working. So probably the next early access will be more compatible. Um, but we're getting there with uh, compatibility on Radeon cards with more advanced features of the engine. Because, you know, I don't want to recommend this if it's not totally compatible with a lot of the things that you might be messing with. But also, you know, like I said, was the problem before. Uh, let me pull that out. Like, these settings that I thought I needed before, the grid resolution and the probe resolution, I don't need because they change stuff in the engine and it seems not to really matter that much anymore. So, yeah, I mean, I guess I'm going to stop it here so I'm not rambling all that much. Um, because I got to edit this video and I, I expected to only be working on it a tiny little bit. But, yeah. Um, bye. <laughs>